Father, in the name of Jesus, we we'll thank you for your love. We we'll thank you for your faithfulness. We we'll thank you for the opportunity to wait upon you in fasting and prayer. We we'll pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, you speak to every heart today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Let's turn our Bible. So this morning, I will be talking about this morning and next Sunday morning, next Sunday concludes the teaching on prayer. So I'll be talking about why is my prayer not working? Why is my prayer not working? Next week, we'll talk about I prayed. What do I do when I prayed and it's lingering? So why is my prayer not working? Why is my prayer not working? A lot of people, you know, a lot of people at different points have experienced what I call frustration in the place of prayer and what does frustration look like i've been praying and i see no results i've just been praying and i see no results i prayed and prayed and prayed and they're wondering why is my prayer not working 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 so you have people that you know number one they don't actively pray again because they've just given up they're just giving up they're just like well you know what do you believe god for they are not actively believing god for anything again because they're just exhausted of believing god for things so when you say so they were like you know lord lord if you want to give me the contract i'll give i'll get a contract but this thing about actively pushing in prayer i'm exhausted lord if you want me to be married then you'll give me the husband or wife but i don't want to be going about it in prayer again because i'm exhausted and they've gotten to a place that you know even when they don't when they pray they don't have that active faith in their prayers let me let me just give your neighbor a nudge and say is that where you are um, is, is that where you are is that where you are so today what we're trying to do is that we're trying to teach why prayer is not working and what are the essential principles that makes prayer very powerful? What are the essential principles that makes prayer very powerful? Let's turn our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 45 verse 11. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 11. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask of me things to come concerning my sons. See, the first thing is this. Prayer is designed to work. That's the first thing. Prayer. See, God was not hoping that you will pray and you get nothing out of it. What you get out of prayer is not necessarily something physical, but you must get something out of prayer. As a matter of fact, prayer was not your own idea. Prayer was God's idea. It was God that invited you to pray. So see what the Bible says. He said, Thus said the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and His Maker. He said, Acts of me. He said, ask of me things to come concerning my sons. That's amazing. That means I can pray for God to show me my future. If you have children, you can pray that God to show you the future of your children. Remember, this is not you saying, God, show me. God says, I want to show you, but I need you to ask me. He said, ask me of, my, ask me of things to come concerning my son. And a lot the next time. He said, and concerning the works of my hand, what did he say? He said, command ye me. Wow. Ooh. That's intense. See, see the powerful invitation. He said, he said, concerning the work of my hand, he said, command me. About the approval, command me. I said chapter 65. I said that's not good enough. I said chapter 65 verse 24. And, and so the first thing I want to establish is that prayer is designed to work. And the reason I'm saying so is that if your experience is that prayer is not working, sooner or later you're going to stop praying. If you're praying, no, because everyone takes value, takes stock to their life. I've invested so much time in prayer. If it's not working, then why do I continue praying? It's just a rational thing to do. And the reason why a lot of you do not pray and your friends do not pray is because 
they've done it for several times and they've not seen results and they're wondering why pray at all and some people just want to protect their heart they say i don't want to be offended with god i don't want to get disappointed so therefore i do not pray and whatever happened is what will just happen but look at prayer prayer was not your idea it was your philosophy prayer was god inviting us look at isaiah chapter 65 verse 24 and it came to pass oh my god somebody say hallelujah that hallelujah needs some help someone say hallelujah i said to that 65 verse 24 and it shall come to pass that before they call somebody say hallelujah, hallelujah. he said before they call he said i will answer he said while they are yet speaking i will hear let me tell you something there. I'm going to come there before the end of the message. When you want to pray, there's some scriptures you need to have handy. You need to have handy. So that they can provoke you. So that you can pray from a place of faith. So just look at this scripture. You, you, you say, he said, before you call, he said, I will answer. Why are you just speaking? He said, I've heard. So the question is this. If prayer is designed to work, Hey, have him pray. Him. I can never prove. Let, let me ever look up here. I will be a liar to say I've never seen prayer work, or oh, I don't know the result of prayer. The reason why is that there are too many things I can point to in my life. When I say too many, they are uncountable things I can point to, which is the work of prayer. I, I know that for some of you. You may not be able to say that. I understand. And that's why you're hearing this. So that you can step up a little. I understand that some of you are frustrated. Because you're like, why all the fasting? Why all the prayers? All the ones I've been praying since when I was young. I've never seen results from it. But things are about to change now. James chapter 4. So prayer is designed to work. So why doesn't prayer work? Because people don't know how to go about prayer. You don't need to ask yourself the question. The way you pray, how do you know how to pray? That was the way you were praying even before you got born again. You've not been thought out to be effective. So, sometimes, effectiveness in prayer is learned. Let, let me show you one scripture. You know, Luke chapter 11 verse 3. Then we'll come to James 4 3. Just hold on, please. You know, Luke 11 verse 3. Luke 11 verse 3. Oh, glory to God. You are my I have no. What's the lady that sang it for me on Friday? No plan B. You're all I have. You're all I have. No other option. No plan B. You're everything to me. Hi. You're all I have. No other option. Haha. <laughs> no plan B. <laughs> ben, you know why they don't know how to pray? This is the reason why. Because you have plan B. That's why. You know, when you say, well, I don't believe in prayer again. It's because you have something you can use. When you have nothing to use, you will make sure your prayer works. You will learn how to pray. Then you will learn how to pray effectively. How can you learn how to pray? With, with your big parents. There's no... With, you know, see, some of you know you can't be poor. Either you tight or you don't tight. That one is sesshood. Because of what you made at home. But there are some of us <laughs> ah. no plan B the problem I can't compare myself to you do I know do I know who you know do I have what you have do I have your connection that's where you're getting into trouble you're comparing yourself to people you see on social media you don't know who they know you don't know what they are being to you don't know who is backing them 
You now say, I'm tired of prayer. You have not started. When you realize that you are all I have, I have no other option. There's no plan B. Oh my God. Luke chapter 11 verse 1. Luke chapter 11 verse 1. The reason I'm saying so is that I agree with everyone here that sometimes you pray and you're frustrated that the prayer cannot work. But let me ask, Pastor Tony, come. Let me ask you a question. You know, because my challenge is that, give me a microphone. When your prayer does not work, you not get to a point where you stop praying or you stop believing in prayers. Okay, I want you to listen to this. How many kids do you have? Two, sir. Two kids. When your kids were learning how to walk, did they walk perfectly from day one or they were falling? No, sir. They were falling. They were falling. And getting up. They were falling and getting up. When they were falling, did you stop them from falling? No, sir. Because they needed to fall to get up. Mm. If you had stopped them from falling, they might never be able to walk. Yes, sir. The reason why you have not learned how to pray effectively is that when you fell in prayer, you didn't, you didn't get up again. So, that process where you pray and nothing happens, it's a learning process. But don't give up here. Don't stop now. When you fall, get up. Ask yourself, what didn't I know about prayer that I need to know now to make my prayer more effective? You know what I'm saying? So, thank you. There are many people that come to church but don't really believe. See, I can tell. They don't really believe in prayer. But they don't think it's an issue because they come to church and they, even in the workforce. But it's when the doctors say they have cancer. The way they cry, they know there's no help. I'm telling you, the way they cry. The reason why is that all their life, they have never learned how prayer works. They have never seen the answer of prayer. So now that there's a problem, they know that who will I turn to? It's different from someone that was healed from this sickness. When the doctor says you have cancer, he said, doctor, wow. You could feel bad because you don't want it. But you're like, I've seen God do it before. He will do it again. But the reason why you have that is because of the place you have been through. You've learned it. What am I telling you? Don't give up on praying. I know you prayed and your brother died. And you prayed and your mom died. And you prayed and you lost the job. Instead of giving up, ask yourself, what do I need to learn? Many of you wrote jam eight times. You wrote it until you passed. You wrote it until you entered school. Why is it prayer you are giving up on? Some of you wrote jam four times. Why? The one that did not go to school, the one that said that jam is not for me. And that was the end. You know those that didn't write jam? Those that had enough money to pay for diploma. Because they had option. They could go to, they could go to London to go and school. They could go to Ghana to go and school. But when you have no option, you will sit down with the jam. If this lesson does not work, you take another lesson. If it's a center, you take another center. Because this thing must work. That should be your attitude towards prayer. Not that you be like, you know what, prayer doesn't work for me. I don't, I don't get it. Lord, if you, you know, if you just do what you want to do. Ah! You are my Ah, you're everything to me. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Look at the apostles. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Just wave your hands and pray first. Just pray one minute. Just pray. Pray out loud. If you can pray in tongues, pray out loud. Pray out loud. Pray out loud. Pray out loud. Pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke 11 verse 1. And it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. When he had stopped praying, one of the disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. Question, were the disciples not praying? They were praying, but there was a difference in their prayers and in the results of their prayers. So, when your prayer is not working, it's time for you to learn how to pray effectively. Instead of giving up on prayer, it's time to learn how to pray effectively. Give me, give me my two bottles of water. Do you have it? 
I, I want to call. Who can I call to drink? Let me just call. Maybe we're looking for everybody to call. Where's everybody now? I don't even know. Where? I always love to call those at the back. I, I find them very, very lovely to call. All the nursing fathers and nursing mother. Let me call my brother with the... Yeah, call him. Tell him to come. Yeah, yeah. He's, he could be shy. Yeah. Come with your wife. Is your wife there? Come with your wife. Let someone else carry the baby. Yeah, so we should come. They had a lovely testimony about the way that they shared. Praise God. You can use any of the any of any of the stairs. Toby should come. Oh, this is good. It's good. Lovely testimony that they shared. How long were you trying to have a child for? Five years. Seven years. What? Seven years. They were trying to have a child for seven years. Now they have their baby. You know. Yeah, they, they shared the testimony in January, but this is not the time for. Yeah, this is it, right? Oh, you didn't remove the level because people are going to accuse me that I'm advertising their product. I've got into trouble one time. Someone said, oh, why are you advertising this product? I said, <laughs> we're just using examples. Can you do it quickly? If you want to advertise your product, you can see me for adverts. Two bottles of, yeah, just give one, just let the wife take one, husband take one. Two of you drink. Just open and drink, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just open and drink, yeah. Good. Just a little, that's fine, you don't have to, you can swap. So, so what, what was he drinking? Yeah. Water. He was drinking water. Why do you think he was drinking water? Like yeah. What was she drinking? Water. Okay. Why didn't she was drinking water? Okay, let's see. Flip. Drink what he was drinking. It's your husband, so. What, what was he drinking? Soda, it wasn't water. It wasn't so, it was soda. Question, take the microphone. Why do you think he was drinking water? Just because it looks like water. Sometimes it looks like prayer, it's not prayer. Hey! This is the confusion. Because you just said in Jesus' name, does that make you prayer? Because you close your eyes, does that make you prayer? Because you know that, does that make you prayer? So we keep saying, I prayed. But in reality, did you pray? It looks like prayer does not mean it is prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can go down. They will take it from you. Someone will take it from you from the other side. Praise God. Question. What makes it prayer? The prayer, who taught you to pray? Are you praying the way you should pray? Give me the ball. Oh, glory to God. James chapter 4, verse 3. James chapter 4, verse 3. Yeah, put it there. Yeah. Yeah, come. Just put it on the floor. Give it to him. James chapter 4, verse 3. Let's pray together. One to go. Your acts and what? And receive not. Why? But if you heard the person ask, you will have not known he acts are missed. Except God told us that he acts are missed. And asking and miss is not asking. And guess what? It says you ask and receive not. That means that God is always willing to give. But the problem is that because you ask the wrongly, you couldn't receive. Wow. Pass the ball to me. Let's play. Oh, that's good. That's fine now. Question. Pick up the ball. In some ball games, if you use your hand, your leg to touch the ball, is it a foul? Which kind of games are those? Basketball. Volleyball. Yes or no? But in some other games, if you use your hand to touch the ball, is it a foul? Which kind of games? Football. The reason why is that although it's a ball game, there are different rules that guide ball games. Although it's prayer, there are different rules that guide prayer. The problem is that we want to use the same prayer for everything. No! 
There are different rules that guide prayer. Then there are different principles that guide different kind of prayers. Praise God. Let's look at some rules that guide prayer. So that when you do this, your prayer will increase in efficiency. Philippians chapter 4. Why is my prayer not working? Because we need to understand the rules that will make them work. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. See what the Bible says. Let's read one to go. By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made. Was he talking about how to pray? He said, there's a way to make your request what? Known unto God. So how do you make it known? The first line was, be careful for nothing. Give me another translation. I want to show you what that line means because you may, because it's old English, you may not get it very well. So I was telling us, this is the guiding principle of prayer. Give me another, maybe amplified message. What other translation? See, what does it say? Verse 6, want to go? He said, don't worry about everything. The first principle of prayer, don't play from the place of worry. Play from the prayer, place of faith. The first principle of prayer, pray from the place of faith, not the place of worry. He said in NLT, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for he has done it. But how do we pray? Most of us pray from a place of worry. And let me tell you something. Most of us pray from a place of anxiety. And you must realize something. Your worry and anxiety is an evidence of unbelief in your prayer. How do I know you pray from a place of worry? I, I know. Ah, oh, God, God. I'm 33, oh, I'm 33, oh, I'm 33. Is that praying from a place of fear or worry or faith? Someone will say, Pastor, I'm pregnant. Pray that I will not lose the baby. I said, why does this kind of demonic prayer come to your mind? Because already there's a thought that you lose the baby. Your prayer should not be not lose the baby. Your prayer should be for safe delivery. One prayer is very negative. He says, see what he says? He says, don't worry. So, are you praying from the place of worry? Because most of us pray from a place of worry. What they say they want to fire up in your office? Oh God. Oh God. Hope I'm not there. Father, please protect me. But that's not the place of fear. That's the place of fear. That's not the place of worry. You don't wonder why your prayer is not working. Because your worry is casting your prayer. The reason why is that worry and fear open doors to demons. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So the first thing, look at Elijah. Elijah said, the Lord that answered by fire, let him be God. He prayed from a place of confidence and faith. Fire fell. The other time he became afraid of Jezebel, what happened? His prayer did not work. Look at, look at Anna. Anna wanted to have a child. She would hold her husband. Give me a child or I will die. Give me a child or I will die. Give me a child or I will die. Give me a child. She never got pregnant. But the day, she said, Lord, you need a prophet. I will be the womb. You will carry the prophet. She got pregnant. Because she began to pray from a place of faith, not worry. Have you not understood why people shout Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ and have the accident? Because the name came out of worry and fear. Jesus, 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 Bass. The reason why is this the name does not work by worry, it works by faith. Question is that if the name of Jesus Christ works, why do you call it 10 times? Because you never believed it worked in the first place. Are you here? Are you here? The place of pray from a place of faith. I'll give an example. What's the difference? If I go and meet my wife and I said, hey, hello dear, can I use your car? You know, because I know I'm asking from a place of faith that she will give me, there's a confidence I used to ask that, hello dear, can I use your car? Oh, there's a confidence. But let me talk from a place of fear. Someone goes to meet his own wife and say, honey, I, I want to take a second wife. Did you see how the volume dropped? 
he will even need maybe he has gotten one girl pregnant he will need some family members to come the reason why is that he already knows that that request has problem that is what it means when you pray from a place of worry and fear you are not praying with we are not praying with the confidence that god has done it so i can't say honey please can i use your car you know so you're like hmm this request to oh, can i call around or oh, to go and look for to beg for me or oh. praise god i said praise god the second thing is this this is the second thing so the first thing you want to do is to pray from a place of what faith no worry have you examined the things you say when you're praying are they more faith filled or more worry filled god and you keep looking at me like this I, I, am, I, am i not your child am i not serving you if I, there was a woman amazingly i heard the woman got up at midnight you know some of you have been told that midnight prayer is powerful it's a useless thing we're thinking I, i'm telling you because the bible says pray all the time they said no no it's powerful because demons demons actually between 12 and 3 when they have meetings that's good i want to ask you the demons in canada in 12 and 3 they're in the office are they because it's afternoon in canada then the demons in dubai that is three hours ahead are just waking up abby demons are spirits they are not bound by human time they are not bound by human distance don't let someone talk into i know somebody that say they say thing with some braggadocious arrogance but it's just braggadocious ignorance if they knew better they'll do better praise god i said praise god so pray from a place of faith how do you pray from a place of faith you know uh, let me give it to let me give you some examples oh wow who I, I remember this i said this some time ago some months ago we had robbers come to my house and i have an office in my house that's outside my house but in my house at the back and my wife called me on the phone and you know i, I was praying for next level i really want to talk and she just said to me eventually she called me and said that thieves are in the compound and she described them in fact I, I wondered what she was saying so as soon as she told me I, I got up to maybe lock the house just kind of put some security measures negotiate it was possible that kind of thing you know that kind of thing so as i got up i, I as i got up to go i began to pray but i noticed my prayer was out of here you know when you are speaking in tongues but the tongues is lagging the tongues is behind because you're afraid i just said okay i just waited i said i know what to do this is how you deal with fear don't just pray anyhow pray with a faith-filled heart i turned to psalm 91 he that dwelleth in his own world. by the time i got to first five faith had risen I, I i just left the place and i'm like okay 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 i'm ready now why when you have worry in your heart that's not the time to pray what do you do first dissolve your worry by flooding your mind with god's word <laughs> colossians chapter 3 verse 16 colossians chapter 3 verse 16 dissolve your worry by flooding your mind with god's word see what it says he said let the word of christ dwell in you richly he said the teachings hey 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 before you pray let the word let the word dwell. that's why in next level you must understand we pray before you pray i said let's read the scripture you know why before the word it takes over i put in the word so that the word of christ can dwell richly in you awakening i had the opportunity to pray for a lady that's a lot possessed she's demon possessed she's not demon possessed have you seen demon possessed before can you recognize the difference i'm done demon possessed how do you know some say they shake a lot of people shake they're not demon possessed some people have epilepsy are they demon possessed don't they shake yeah so during <laughs> during awakening you know and demon possession is different from demonic attack or afflictions yeah so i said that there was i said I, in the when i was praying earlier before awakening i saw in the vision that there were some ladies that when they wake up they had attacks they had marks on their body from their dreams they would something happened in that dream and they, when they wake up they would see marks on their body so i asked them to come out 
So I began to pray for them one by one. And, you know, it, most of the time they are demonic cases because how do you have a dream and have a mark? So by the time I got to the second one, you know, I, if I, when I met the first one, as soon as I came to meet her, she began to shake. She was just shaking. I said, what's wrong? He said, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I'm shaking. He said, I'm so sorry. He said, and when she said she would try to comport her, I said, I'm so sorry, but I'm shaking. He said, I'm trying to hold it, but I can't hold it. I don't know. I'm, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I feel embarrassed. She was telling me, she was talking. He said, I feel embarrassed. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm shaking. Of course, she didn't realize that that shaking was beyond her. I prayed for her. Then the second one, as I moved closer, I, I noticed the influence of the Spirit. And I said, go. She ran from here and ran to the end of the auditorium. As if the evil spirit was only to run away. Of course, that's what the evil spirit want to run away, she should not get delivered. So, only that I was wondering how far the evil spirit will go before he comes back. The reason why is that even if he runs, it's words that will bring him back. Yes, even, if you, even if the girl cannot hear me, if the spirit is in, if he runs out here and runs to five kilometers, if I say come back, the girl may not hear, but the spirit will hear. Because in the realm of the spirit, there are no, there are no distance. Yes. So she will come back the same way she ran. Watch the video. Show them. I want to show you. So, so the good thing is that when I say come, when I say that, once she said, I just noticed in the auditorium, the brethren, we just began to pray. I'm like, ah. Okay, hold on. Yeah, <laughs> she says, so sorry, you're shaking. You can't control it because it's responding to power. Yeah. <laughs> she keeps saying, I'm so sorry, I'm shaking. But it's not you. It's responding to power. Come out! I command affliction of the enemy. Yeah. Is she doing finesse? Come out of her! Now! 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 Leave her. Let her go. She wants to go. Leave her. Yeah. Never return! Jesus! You foul spirit, I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. You need to let her go. You need to let her go. In the name of out. Don't touch me. Hold on. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, somebody. What I wanted to show you was this. As soon as you are doing just give God praise. The brethren, the brethren, people in church, it's you gone. and I. Just went, oh, it's gone. It's gone. I said, you can stop the video now. I said, these tongues are out of fear. <laughs> in fact, one of our leaders told me that there was a person that said, sat to him. I said, hey, she's possessed. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> The reason why I'm showing you this is that when I say people pray out of worry and fear, it's what people do all the time. And it just showed you that when you want to pray, don't pray out of worry. Don't pray out of fear. He said pray from a place of confidence and faith with thanksgiving. So, you know, I, I told the brethren, I said, I said, excuse me, you don't have to join me in prayer. Don't, you can keep your prayer. You were not joining me in prayer before. Why are you now joining me in prayer? <laughs> Praise God. And just to let you know, those either people shake up and down doesn't mean they are possessed. Yeah, the possession is something else. It's very spiritual immaturity to conclude that because someone was shaking or moving, the person is possessed. The way you know someone is possessed is by discerning of spirits and it's a gift. Because many of the people that you don't know are possessed are very possessed. Yeah, I told you some weeks ago, my wife employed a staff in the house. You know, for my wife to employ, my wife is very smart and intelligent and all of that. So he was a good person, you know, and I just saw the person in our kitchen. 
I'd never seen him before. As soon as I walked into him, I saw a presence with him. And I just told my wife, I said, he's possessed. But naturally, there's nothing that will make you see or know that that person is possessed. Someone say hallelujah. <laughs> so back to the question. So pray from a place of faith. That's what I'm going to. Pray from what? A place of faith. The second, the second thing I wanted to notice is, so the second thing, so how do you pray? The first thing is that you need to pray from a place of faith, not a place of worry or what? Of fear. The second thing is James chapter 5 verse 16. You need to read because I know that there's no scripture you can see that. So James chapter 5 verse 16. Let's go ahead. James chapter 5 verse 16. Are you there? All right, let's go ahead and read. Confess your sins, what? Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. What does he say? He said, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. The second reason why prayer don't work is that people pray based on their own works and righteousness. The Bible says the prayer that works is the prayer of a righteous man. And the righteousness is based on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So let me tell how people pray. Father, there's no reason I should not get this job. I'm a tighter. I'm a tighter. You know. There's no reason. So, in prayer, they'll be bragging on what they did. Ha. If you start that, you know what the devil will do? He will bring out all the time you failed in your titan. All the time you missed it by two nera. You will not say, Lord, what's he doing? That's not his smart way to pray. How about some of you? You're still single. You say, Father, ah. I kept myself as a virgin. I'm a virgin. I'm a virgin. Nobody, nobody, nobody has touched me. He said, why am I the one that is struggling with marriage? I mean that I'm a virgin. I mean that I'm a virgin. You even start comparing yourself. You say, you will not say it to God, but your thoughts, you'll be like, Lord, all my other friends that were sleeping around, Anita, Neka, Funto, Jimmy, they were sleeping around, they are all married. It's me that I'm a virgin. You know, be, because, because you don't understand that you're, oh wow. So, you say I'm a virgin. And God is saying, and, and Satan is saying this. No, this is not God because God doesn't accuse. Satan is saying this. Are you a virgin? What about all the pornography? Hey, you're a pornographic virgin. <laughs> the reason why is that answer to prayer is not based on our own righteousness. It's based on what? His righteousness. So when I pray, I'm not going to say, Lord, because of me, because of that. I'm saying, Lord, left to me. There's no reason why she get pregnant with all the abortion, with all the mistakes, but based on the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus is the one you cannot refuse. Left to me, I've gotten kicked back, done bribe. I should not get the contract, but based on the blood of Jesus. Oh, do you know what it means to pray based on the, on the name of Jesus? Where's my ATM card? Oh, wow. Where's my ATM card? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I want to see someone I can I can just give money to spend today. You know. <laughs> on a mic Give her a microphone. <laughs> At least my dollar ATM card. Oh. You know. If I just give this to you, give it, give it like, if I give this to you and, and stay, just give, have it for a week. Do what you would do with it. Oh what here's the microphone. <laughs> I said, Oh my goodness, Pastor. My <laughs> God. <laughs> How much, and you know it's my credit card, I know it's loaded. Yes. <laughs> How much do you think will come out after one week? I can't even tell you. <laughs> you know why? Hold on. You know why? If it's a credit card, it's based on how much she has. But if it's my credit card, it's based on how much I have. Let, let, let's take it deeper. Just imagine that Dangote was so blessed and he came to church and said, Pastor, I can't thank you for all you've done for me. This is my credit card. Take it for one month. Hey. Hey. Hey, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think I will go do? What do you think I will go to? What? What? What is it? Ah. Uh -huh. It's also a conference. It's more than a conference, so. <laughs> ah. When I get the card. Hmm. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to your boss. <laughs> I, I will just go there. Which of your jets, you know? And they say, no, no, I say this is cash show, just one card, though. Cash show. The reason why you go to Ed Boss, I know who gave me the card. I know what he has. I know what is behind him. Left to me, my card may not enter Ed Boss. But I know his own card will enter Ed Boss. So when he says, pray in the name of Jesus, he's saying that use the card not on your own account, on his own account. Are you here? Yeah. Ah. So you may have no money, but can Christ be broke? No. Can his account be limited? No. no. So when I say in the name of Jesus, I'm saying I'm drawing based on Christ's ATM, not my ATM. My ATM might not be able to draw a good husband. My neighbor's job approval. My neighbor to draw job. My neighbor to draw funding. But Christ ATM. There's nothing it cannot draw. Stop, stop taking your ATM to God. Use Christ ATM. And that's why he told us when we pray. He said pray in my name. He said use my ATM card. Oh glory to God. I said glory to God. So one of the reasons why I pray I struggle is because most of the prayer is based on us. And based on what we do. It's not based on what Christ. And if you join an open prayer, you know, one of the things we say is that based on what Christ has done. You know why I keep saying that? Christ is the person that God cannot refuse. Every time you use his ATM, it must bring out something. See John 16. See, see John 14 rather. He says, whatsoever you ask in my name. He said, use my ATM card. Oh God, yeah, back up a lot. Yeah, yeah. He said, use, he said, whatsoever you ask in my name. He says, I would do it. That the Father may be glorified. He said, just use my ATM card. He said, I will do it. Stop saying that, Lord, me, and what I've done. Those are two steps. There are four steps on your guide to pray. I've given you two. The subsequent step will cover some more. But I want to teach you now. So those are two guides. Number one, we pray from faith, not what? Worry or fear. Number two, we pray based on what? On what? We pray based on righteousness. We pray based on Christ's righteousness. So when I go in prayer, I don't say, Lord, me, me, me. Mm -mm. It's not about me. I came with another ATM card. And the last thing is, how do you pray? James chapter 5, verse 16. Oh, glory to God. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. James chapter 5, verse 16. Poka, pale, koma, nabrate, So, how exactly do you pray? James chapter 5, verse 16. This is one of the fundamental laws of prayer. Can you give me the amplified version? I, I want to jump to it. I just have about three minutes to close the service. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. 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 Say, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. See what it says. Let's read one to go. Confess to one another therefore your faults, your sleeps, your false steps, your offenses, and your sins. And pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. Please stop. Then let's start the next line. The what? The earnest. Hold on. When he said the earnest, that's already King James. But Amplified now broke it down so that you can understand it. The earnest, the first word is heartfelt. This is the first one of the grand principles of prayer. For your prayer to work, it will be heartfelt. A lot of prayer are head felt. A lot of prayer are mouth felt, but they are not heartfelt. He said when you're praying, he said the prayer is heartfelt. Give an example of a heartfelt prayer. Look at Anna. As she was praying in the temple, the Bible says her mouth was moving faster than the words. Why? It was not the mouth talking, it was the heart talking. The mouth was trying to catch up. The problem is that when it comes to prayer, a lot of people pray from the head. As they're praying, they're looking on their Instagram. Um, okay. You know, you know, you know. There's no salt, there's no salt, there's no salt. There's no salt, there's no salt, there's no salt. The rice, boy, the rice. Those, those are mouth felt. You have not gotten there yet. But when you come to church and they say pray, and you're looking at, you're looking at the right, looking at the left, you're saying, I don't want them to know that. I, you are packaging in prayer. Error. Uh, what did I say? Error. Error. He 
he said the heart felt look at look at the bible let's see the bible in the book of luke jesus was praying the bible says the tears the the, the sweat that came from his head was as thick as blood uh -uh. sometimes people say why why do you shout in prayer we don't plan to shout too but there's something when it touches inside hey some of the people who are not civilized i feel bad for you because you are the one that lacks spiritual intelligence to see what god is doing it's it's heartfelt the reason why we respond that way is because our ma our heart is indicting ah, yeah, 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 yeah. something is happening within us ah, this kind of prayer sometimes suits cannot help you take suits oh God, bah, yeah. you put suits somewhere because it's not a matter of suits you remove your high cost shoe this is not a cost shoe matter this is not a costume matter because this is a matter of heartfelt prayer. This is what heartfelt prayer. You know, oh, you know, um, uh, you want to pray oh, oh, to the gracious Holy Father, omnipotent and omnipresent God. Ah, <laughs> you will soon know prayer is not English, that prayer is heart that talks to hearts. Praise God. This is why you are praying like a big man, you are showing us big man in prayer. Oh, yes, Father, yes, Father, yes, Father. Because you have not found something to pray. Read, read about Elijah. Elijah knelt down, put his head in between his, his legs. Heartfelt prayer. The question is that we've been praying prayer from the tongue, prayer from the mouth. Have you prayed heartfelt prayer? Where your heart bow shall Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The whole of your body is vibrating. See, someone beside is wondering what's going on. You are not talking much, but sweat is all over. Because there's a travail in the spirit. 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 Ah, this is not the kind of prayer you pray. You're texting, oh. This is not the prayer you pray. That one is different. Not the one you're driving, oh. Eshka, leke, Eshka, Holy Ghost, thank you, Holy Ghost. No, this is the kind of prayer that Holy Ghost takes over. This is the kind of prayer you plan for 15 minutes. You look at the time, one hour has gone. It's heartfelt prayer. This is the kind of prayer that moves husband. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. It will move job. It will move cancer out. It will move funding. You've been praying for your mouth. It's time to pray heartfelt prayer. It is time. You know, all, all this contemporary. Uh, hi, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, you're so great. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. <laughs> you know, sometimes when I pray this way, I call names of God that I didn't realize. Sometimes it's even your local language that has strong meaning. It's the reason why his heart felt. You cannot see. Prayer is not a place you're going to say, you know, I'm an influencer, you know, as an actress. Prayer is a leveler. He's a leveler. There's no actress in prayer. There's no empty in prayer. There's no billionaire in prayer. He's between you and your creator. He's between you and your God. He's, he's the way I am. I'm, I shout a kavaya. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. If we can begin to pray hard for prayers, we'll see results. The prayer that cannot touch you can touch nothing. The prayer that cannot move you can move nothing. Let the prayer move you first. I said, let the prayer move you first. Let the prayer and see what the Lord will do. Stand on your feet. Let us pray. Oh, glory to God.